Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo. We are not starting with a full overview of the zoo like we normally do. I'm back in this habitat which has been the bane of my existence because I can't get animals to fit in it. I have finally found an animal that will get in here without space requirements being a huge issue because it is tiny. We have the black-tailed prairie dog in here and they don't really fit in with a the theme but they are in here and it works. I've tried the skunk, I've tried the Galapagos giant tortoise in here, nothing has worked so far. The prairie dogs are happy here, they've got enough space, they've had a little babby and everything's looking a little better now. Two babbies, I've just seen another one. We have a couple more things to talk about before we get on with today's build, so let's move on to our next area that has changed a little bit too. This is the station entrance to Old Town itself, and you can see here that we've set up two brand new habitats in these two buildings to the left and right of us. We are going to have the Galapagos giant tortoise in one of them and the striped skunk in another. That should finish off all of the habitat animals for this central district of Old Town, apart from one. Today's build. We're going to be making a raccoon habitat in the building where the information center is. I'm really excited about this one because I've got a couple of thematic ideas that I want to play around with that I hope you're going to enjoy. That's pretty much it. One more surprise though. I want to start building the foundations and stuff for the next kind of phase of development for Arcadia. And we've been talking a little bit in the comments about what we could potentially do and I've decided that we're going to do a wetlands biome with a slight mountainous region as well to incorporate some more mountainous animals. And we're going to go over there now and take a quick look. So it's getting dark which is really good because it means I'm not going to reveal too much about what's going on here. But as you can see here we have this mountainous biome that we started to develop and Old Town's train, uh, the entrance train station is just to the left of our screen right here with a path leading out and then we've got this weird looking staircase at the moment it's weird looking it won't be once we finish decorating it that goes up into the mountain which will then go across the train track and bring you down into some more habitats on that side and then over around on this side of it we're going to have some more habitats facing into Old Town. We've put in some paths and stuff for the year as well, just to make sure that everything's looking okay and we can kind of map out in our minds where we're going to be putting stuff. I've also completely fleshed out these uh, underground railway station tunnels. So they go all the way through and here you're going to have a little view of whatever goes on in our wetlands biome and some little sleeping areas for alligators or whatever wetlands animals we put in that area. Coming back out of the tunnel there, you can see the entrance it's looping round and over here, and this little space here is where we're going to begin our wetlands. And this is going to be a much more open area than how, like, the compact stuff that we've got in Old Town. So you're going to see a lot more kind of widespread areas. And I'm kind of, like, taking some little bits of like inspiration from like the new orleans bayous and stuff like that just to make some really nice little wooden um, buildings and things like that as we merge these two districts together with one large adjoining thing so let's dive into our build today where we're going to be making our raccoon habitat i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you when we start building so as you can see we've already marked out a little uh, bathing area for our raccoons and that's going to get filled in and integrated into this larger part of the habitat that i'm building right now i wanted to run kind of like a little castle wall all the way around this side of the habitat once again leaning into that old and and like medieval type of village that we have created here in old town i wanted to give our raccoons a little palace um, or tournament grounds or some sort of jousting arena because they have a climbing requirement i thought it would be quite nice to have like a mock joust like barrier in there that the raccoons would be able to climb on and run across and then we lead into this whole like almost palatial feel to the whole thing as it like goes right next to the river that's running through Old Town. It would be really nice to put in some little turrets and stuff and make use of everything that came out with the Twilight Pack. So we've got like little gargoyles and stuff in there and some really nice looking Gothic architecture pieces that I'd like to incorporate into this build. 
But for now, we're just designing the basic outline of stuff, and that includes the tiling and uh, stonework around our actual bathing area. And we're using some of these pieces from the Twilight Pack just to create a flat surface that's going to loop all the way around the pool area, which is going to have a shallow and a deep end. I've already noticed a couple of uh, things that might need to sort out, like this area right here on your left. The wall is so small that the raccoons just jump up the wall into the pool area which I don't want them to do I want them to make use of the wall that I'm building now and walk all the way around to actually get to the bathing area it's going to have a shallow and a deep end because they do have some deep water requirements and then we need to have some climbing stuff in there as well so the idea I had was we create like this little jousting slash tournament grounds and allow the raccoons to run up and down the barrier that would uh, separate the two knights that are jousting each other little like tweaks and stuff there and we can also of course incorporate the European architecture where we have those old shields and stuff and that'll be a really fun thing to do now Moving on to my walls, I once again used stuff from the Twilight Pack and I was playing around here trying to work out how high I actually wanted my walls to be and I eventually settled on just adding another one meter high uh, barrier on, the, on both sides actually to uh, increase the height a little bit more. Then we came back in with these are actual door wood pieces. So I came in with them and made a floor out of them in the same way I usually do when I'm making custom floors. Lots of duplicates, a couple of like spins around and integrating different types of architecture within the build itself. And this got dragged all the way across. I made a stone part for the curvature of the wall because I have a lot of trouble with the uh, actual stock curved pieces in this game. They don't work very well and they, it's very difficult to get use out of them other than a really flat looking building. I mean, if you have had any experience with these curved pieces, please send them my way. I'd love to see some videos of people actually making good use of these. I just don't like them very much. I prefer to make my own curved flooring, but for the sake of quickness, I thought I'd try and do things a little bit differently this time and save myself a little bit of time in those intricate design works. Now, these are actual portcullis gate doors. Uh, they, they are meant to be joined together to make a nice big wooden portcullis that you would use for the entrance to a castle or something like that. But I decided to make a fence out of them, as I've already done in another part of the zoo, and it's nice to keep that continuity going. Remember, we are kind of trying to merge the two architectures of Old Town and the actual farmland that surrounds it as well. Next, we're going to be playing around with some gargoyles. So I wanted to make use of these stone pieces because I thought the actual walls looked really bare and I didn't want to come in with a load of foliage in this episode. Anyway, we are going to be adding foliage to this in another episode as we prepare for the funny, like, final tour of Old Town and the surrounding area once we get everything finished. So I decided in habitat terms this was going to be part of the habitat so i built up some stonework and then i put the raccoon gargoyle in there and i wanted to have him holding this torch and at first i thought i'd got it right but there was far too much clipping and i decided to get rid of it then i thought maybe a jack-o-lantern but again that's too halloween themed for me we then settled on these festive baubles as you can see the raccoon gargoyle actually has like an apple or something in his hand that he's eating and i thought why not have that light up so we put that in and duplicated it all the way around. Then we came in with these miniature towers and put them in as well. Kind of making it out like the idea that this is a castle that's been built for the raccoons and they're kings of their own little kingdom here. So I thought that was a really nice idea. And when it's all incorporated, I think it looks really fun. It's like one of the more, like I guess, like tongue-in-cheek little habitats that I've done that has a little bit more of a playful nature to it. A lot of the stuff that I've built so far has had... Very, it's been very much like targeting realism and stuff. This is the first one where I've kind of given it a weird theme and I had a lot of fun doing it and it's just nice every now and then to do something a little bit different and it may actually help me get back into the swing of things because next up we're going to be doing a lot of kind of little bits of building work and things like that so to play around with these sort of things has been a lot of fun. And you can see it's starting to take shape now. We've got our basics in place. And once we've got all of these little towers put in place, we'll then be moving on to putting in our habitat enrichment items and doing that sort of work. And then we'll finish off with our foliage. One important thing, I did need to put a little bit more fencing in here. And that was quite difficult to get right. And actually what might end up happening when I go on to build the bridge system in Old Town, this might change a little bit as well. But we'll just see how that goes. I'm pretty confident that it's looking pretty nice so far 
these little iron uh, posts and stuff were just put in to accentuate the actual... I wanted to make little turrets and balustrades on the uh, side of this castle wall, but it didn't work out very well. So I made some out of metal and looped them all the way around. This is our jousting barrier. It's small, it's got a little bit of a climbing thing going for it, and I just think it was something nice. Uh, you can imagine the raccoons just climbing up here and running all the way along the post. I don't think they'll be mounting the Schwalski's horses and jousting with each other in them, but I mean, that, that could be fun to see, who knows? <laughs> then we came in with the rest of our enrichment items, couple more climbing things for the raccoons to climb up and down onto the walls. I was hoping that they might use them, but I've not seen it happen yet. We'll just have to see how that goes. I may need to do a little bit of adjustment and tweaking to uh, get those right. Then just some smaller items in here of enrichment in terms of fulfilling that climbing requirement. A couple of posts and trees and stuff put down just to make sure that there was always something for them to do in here as well as the enrichment items. And obviously that little pool that they've got, which I mean, I would swim in that for sure. <laughs> um, then we put in a slow feeder. I've realized that I've not actually put in a, a like a, sta a standard stock feeder yet. So that's gonna have to happen as well. And I need to make sure that the pool actually links up to a water purifier because at the moment it doesn't. We then came in with these climbing bridges. I thought it'd be nice to have a little playful bridge going right the way across the pool area. Again, I've not seen this used yet, but as I've already said, I've not spent a lot of time since completing this build watching the raccoons in their natural habitat. The zoo is getting very difficult to manage in between like recordings and stuff. Not in terms of like we're not hemorrhaging money. As you can see, the bank balance is pretty healthy apart from the uh, financial outlay for this habitat has been pretty large. But in general, we're making a nice bit of money and things are going really well. It's just that we are getting a lot of animals now and I have to keep on top of the births and especially when it comes to the exhibits that are getting a little bit out of control. And then the Indian peafowl, which was a terrible idea because they have taken over that enclosure and the Schwalski's horses are starting to starve because the peafowl keep getting the food before them. Anyway, back to this. This is our shallow end of the pool. I brought in these temple stone brickwork pieces and just made a nice little, you know, differentiating pieces going in there, changing the rotations a little bit and making a bit of a mishmash of stonework and then they step down into the habitat itself. Now into the sleeping area, I did notice that there were a couple of issues when I took away the walls so we're just tidying up some of the uh, log work and woodwork within this building here. Then we put in some glass on this side. This is going to be a staff entrance anyway so no guests are going to be able to come here and see the raccoons in their sleeping areas. It's literally just going to be when they're out and about doing their day-to-day -day stuff. But other than that, looking really good so far. And this was just simple. I wanted to continue to fulfill that climbing requirement so I actually built like a little uh, a mezzanine floor in this sleeping area that the uh, raccoons will be able to climb up to when they want to go to sleep. It's the only place where they have bedding, so I'm hoping that they use that. One of the issues that I had when I did like high up uh, sleeping areas back when I did Northlands when we built the Japanese macaque habitat was I had these lovely sleeping quarters that weren't getting used. But anyway, I did think about putting iron girders over the windows, but I abandoned that idea very quickly. And this is us putting in our mezzanine floor. I just uh, used the climbable uh, pieces here made a couple of ramps then had it come back out at a right angle and go right across that window and then i of course adjusted the height of the whole thing so that the ramp was a little bit more easy to access for our raccoons as you can see it goes all the way down there that wasn't working for me so we put another one meter stone slab in here and then once that was in we were able to adjust the height of the whole piece bringing it down level with the stone slab and giving it a much easier access area. I then thought this did look a little bit bare even though that was kind of the aim so I thought I'd put in a little tire swing. This was just really simple using a bit of rope and uh, one of the, the wheels from the actual Planet Zoo pack that are actual spare wheels for the 4x4 off-road vehicles. And we just had these hanging down, a little bit of rope on the end, very much like I did for the um, Arctic Fox habitat in Northlands again. You can see I'm starting to bring things from other builds into this zoo so that I'm getting a little bit more practice and re-familiarizing myself with stuff that I used to do. 
it would be nice to have actual like tire swings and stuff that we could put in i mean because i've not done all of my research yet i don't actually know if that could be a thing anyway we're going to come back to that doorway because now it's time for our foliage so because this looks a little bit too much of a flat texture right now foliage is going to be the best way for us to flesh it all out and that starts with these autumnal leaves once again from the twilight pack we're going to be using a lot of foliage that came out with the twilight pack and i'm just currently putting in some rock work here to cover up those imperfections where the actual terrain dips down where we've got that um area like marked out for the water putting in some stone just patches that all up and gets the actual terrain looking nice and even again you can see our raccoons are there and they're gonna have to just uh, allow me to build this stuff around them basically <laughs> came in and did a little bit of terrain painting of course we want that jousting area to be really bare so that all of the grass has kind of gone from there but we do need to be careful because raccoons don't like too much uh, soil rock and stuff like that they prefer a lot more grass which is a bit strange considering in their natural habitat now they have come further and further inland and start raiding your bins and uh, hanging out on street corners so <laughs> anyway putting in some foliage and we're using the usual stuff but i have been able to bring back my arrowwood bushes which are one of my favorite pieces because of the levels of texture that they give the nice pops of color they are basically like um, bramble bushes on steroids i think and i love using them they're so good and if i can actually combine the three bracken bramble and arrowwood bushes you better believe i'm gonna and then the next thing to do was put in some nice planters giving it that like little mystical feel i can't remember what they're called but they came out again with the twilight pack they're available in a multitude of different colors and i think they look really nice they've got this almost fantastical look about them which i think is really cool next up we just finish off this little bit of a uh, foliage work around the actual entrance to the sleeping area and the staff entrance and then we move on to further work on foliage and stuff putting in some lily pads in our pool area obviously i think that's a little bit too shallow for lilies to grow out of but that's not too much of an issue i guess it looks nice as it is lady fern and dutchman's breeches complete the foliage work in here i was going to put a bit of rock work in there as well but i thought best not to this is already looking pretty overcrowded Moving on, the reason I didn't show you the earlier doorway build is because it absolutely failed and I didn't like it. And I thought, we're using a lot of the twilight brickwork here, why don't we change the whole foundation of this building into that actual brickwork? So we did that, we turned the actual base of this entire building into that nice rustic stonework, fits in with Old Town and it makes the building look uniform but also different to the other buildings within Old Town. I spent a little bit of time trying to design a nice doorway for this one and it didn't always work but I think I got there in the end using a mix of wooden planks from the twilight doors and the actual stone supports that also came out with the twilight pack very similarly to the Asian stone support work stuff that I use in the other buildings including actually the base of this one as well so again you've got those contrasting textures themes and stuff but it all has a very similar feel to it when you combine a lot of them together this doorway was very difficult though eventually i managed to get it sorted and i think it looks quite nice it's just i think it's really important to show you the bits that don't work as well as the stuff that does and this one did take a little bit of time didn't want to show too much of it but you can see i have a lot of difficulty with it moving these stone slabs to and from to try and get it all lined up and it can be a bit of a nightmare to watch which as you can see is probably another good reason for me not showing you the whole thing because there's a lot of annoying camera work going on shall we say <laughs> Anyway, we're going to move on to the next phase of the build, which is basically tidying everything up and getting ready for our speed uh, speed build, our showcase. So I want to make sure that everything here is again fitting in with the rest of the themes around Old Town. So we come in with those decals. I actually used some of the actual moss ones on the uh, walls there as well, and then designed some windows. And this was again something I had difficulty with. I used the emissive window panes. They sit behind the stained glass stuff and then I made a little bit of a trim 
I played around with a couple of trim ideas and ended up settling on one that was a lot more simple than what I was going for. And as you can see, it's very difficult to get a hold of those emissive light panels once you've put them in place. So if you're going to do this, I would recommend maybe separating them from the larger groups and just putting those windows in separately and then joining them all up when you save them as a blueprint. It's such a shame that these twilight window beams don't have a one metre long version of them because they would have been perfect and made a really nice looking window for me. Instead, we ended up with something a little bit more simple with a trim on the top and the bottom where the sides were left bare. Next, I put in these window boxes but didn't actually put any planters in them. That was an, a deliberate design choice. I didn't want to overfill it with plants, especially when you see what's coming next in the build. We put in some windows though so that it looked really nice and had that feel that there was potential that something might be happening upstairs, like staff could have access to upper storages or we could have a fake staff room up there as well. Or in-house staff could live there. And here we are, the Virginia Creeper, one that I've been wanting to use for such a long time because it provides a lovely contrast of colour and it fits in very well with our raccoons. They are North American. This is one of the plants that we can put in those habitats, so it was time to go wild with them. We brought in those European flags as well, just to add a little bit of a pop of colour, hanging them from the actual window boxes, and I think they look really cool. Then a shield on the top of the buildings on these higher peaked roofs. And again, over here, on this wall. I then put in a raccoon, and they look like they're holding the shields, so we made that happen. And you're damn right I like that idea so <laughs> that stayed in and I think it looks really cute it's just a nice little touch put some windows on the roofs these ones didn't really work so I took them back off and just had them running along the main building I will be doing some finishing touches before we do our little tour at the end of like episode 20 that's what I'm aiming for anyway I can't promise that we're going to have a full tour of how we're looking so far by episode 20 but we'll give it a go these Virginia creepers once again making an appearance coming all the way up and I wanted to have these spread out along the actual ground as well as if they've gotten a little bit overgrown and our staff have yet to come and cut them back but it is really taking shape and I'm really enjoying it once again Virginia creepers coming all the way up that large side of the building and looping round into the sleeping quarters for the raccoons I really like this build. We're coming up to our showcase, so I really hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm sorry my voice still isn't 100%, and that's probably one of the reasons why this has been a bit of a rushed video, in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It's been a lot of fun to do. I'm really pleased to have finally done a raccoon habitat, and to actually be almost finished with Old Town in general. We still have a lot of farmland stuff to work on, and that's going to come in the future, but Old Town Central District is just about done barring a few finishing touches and the two habitats that we're going to build together next week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Again, apologies for my voice. I'm still quite ill, but I'm getting over it. I'll be back to my best next week and we'll have more videos to come. See you next time. Bye bye.